Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube station with our third game of our triple header. We had two out of the ballpark 18 games, the 1960 retro replay of the All-Star game for my Red Sox replay, and also a game from the Red Sox of 1960. Those two are on demand now on my channel from Out of the Ballpark. 18 had a wonderful time with the people in the chat. We've now moved on to Digital Diamond Baseball, third game that we are playing today, which will soon be Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, almost 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Massachusetts. <clears throat> Excuse me, and we're going to continue our 1978 retro replay from Fenway Park, and it's April in retro time, 18th. We have the visiting Milwaukee Brewers, four wins, six losses, taking on the first place Boston Red Sox, six wins, three losses. Let's quickly go to the lineups. Paul Molitor to lead off. He's playing shortstop for the Brewers. Playing second base, batting second, Don Money. Batting third, the former Red Sox, Cecil Cooper playing first base. Left field, Larry Heisel, batting fourth. Another former Red Sox, batting fifth, the designated hitter, Ben Ogilvy. Batting sixth, the right fielder, Dick Davis. Batting seventh, playing third base, Sal Bando. Batting eighth, center fielder, Gorman Thomas. And batting ninth, doing the catching, Charlie Moore. Doing the pitching for the Milwaukee Brewers, Larry Sorensen in 1978, 18 wins, 12 losses, earned run average of 3.21. Now to the Red Sox starting lineup, playing shortstop Rick Burleson, batting first, playing second base, giving Jerry Remy a day off, Jack Brohammer, batting third, the designated hitter, Jim Rice, he will win the MVP in 1978. Batting fourth, playing left field, Captain Carl Stramski. Batting fifth, doing the catching, Carlton Fisk. Batting sixth, the center fielder, Freddie Lynn. Batting seventh, playing first base, George Boomer Scott. Batting eighth, the right fielder, Dwight Evans. Batting ninth and playing third base, Butch Hobson. On the mound. For the Boston Red Sox, Dennis Eckersley. In 1978, the Eck was a 20-game winner. 20 wins and 8 losses. Earned run average of 2.99. Now, if you're not familiar with Digital Diamond Baseball, this is a nice little dice game for the computer. Let me go to matchups here. It's a $20 value, and you can go on the Digital Diamond Baseball website and download a free demo that you can play three inning games to see if you like it. This plays differently than Out of the Ballpark and also Action PC Baseball. Uh, it's a dice game. I love watching the two Earls on tabletop baseball. They actually play the dice game with the actual dice. Not this game, they play Stratomatic and Appa and Pine Tar. Uh, I recommend their channel if you're a baseball fan. That's Tabletop Baseball with Earl and Earl. So this is the closest thing I could come to, brings me back to my childhood, of playing Stratomatic. Alrighty. So leading off for the Milwaukee Brewers, Paul Molitor. And the statistics here are the retro replay statistics. They have enough games where I'm using those stats now, and he's hitting 300 right now. And for Molitor to reach base safely, he needs a 7-4-7 seven, seven or higher with a dice roll. A home run roll consists of a 9-8-2 or greater. Eckersley is good for 32 batters before he reaches his threshold. Alright, let's play ball. Fisk flashes the sign. Here's the pitch by the Eck. The dice roll. We await the result. That's a 0-1-3. That is going to be a big swing and a miss on the curveball. Eckersley strikes out Molitor for the first out of the inning. We go now to Don Money. 
Don Money on the retro replay. He's been struggling. He's only batting 195 and only 154 off right-handed pitching. Four. Money to advance safely to first, a 706 or higher. Home run swing, 971 or better. The Eck wants to keep this dice roll low. Let's see if he can go back-to-back -back strikeouts here. Here's the pitch to Money. The dice roll. That's a 1-8-2, another strikeout. Another big swing and the miss. So two up, two down by via the K. And it brings up Cecil Cooper, the Brewers' first baseman, former Red Sox. He was on the 1975 Red Sox World Series team. Currently, Cooper's batting 256 in the retro replay. Only 231 off right-handed pitching. Eck looking to strike out the side here. For Cooper to reach base safely, 6-4-8 or higher. Home run swing, 9-6-1 or greater. Two outs, no one on. Here's the pitch to Cooper. The dice roll. That's a 3-6-3. Three, three. That ball goes to Brohammer. And he grabs that line drive to end the inning. So a line out to Brohammer by Cooper. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. Do up for the Red Sox. Burleson, Brohammer, and Rice. Rick Burleson on the retro replays hitting 378. And off right handed pitching, he's been crushing it. 462. Larry Sorensen takes the mound for Milwaukee. He's 2 0 in the retro replay with an ERA of under 1, 0 0.53. He's good for 32 batters. Burleson to reach safely, 7-5-7 or higher. Home run swing, very slim possibility of that, 9-9-7 or better. Charlie Moore goes through the signs. Here's the pitch to Burleson. The dice roll, 7-4-9. That ball goes to Molitor at short. He knocks it down, picks it up, and throws to Cooper for the first out of the inning. Good recovery by Molitor. So one out, Jack Brohammer steps to the plate. This is his first start of the season. <clears throat> He's a left-handed batter. He'll be facing a right-handed throwing Sorensen. For Brohammer to reach base safely 709 or higher. His home run swing very remote 998 to 999. Here's the pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll. 622. That ball goes out to center field. It's a deep fly ball. Thomas goes back and he makes the catch. So Brohammer's out, two outs, no one on. Jim Rice steps to the plate. Rice would go on to win the 1978 Most Valuable Player in Major League Baseball. Rice currently hitting 410 on the retro replay and 407 off right-handed pitching. Rice's home run swing, 940 or more to reach base safely, 681 or higher. Here's the pitch to Jim Rice. The dice roll, 1-3-2, that ball goes to Sal Bando at third base, he picks it up and throws to Cooper, inning over. After one full, no score. Due up for the Brewers, Heisel, Oglevy, and Davis. Dennis Eckersley on the retro replay is one win, no losses. Larry Heisel batting 378 and 333 off right-handed pitching to reach base safely 686 or higher. Home run swing pretty good. 938 or greater. Here's the pitch to Heisel. The dice roll. 225, that's a strikeout. Another big swing and a miss. The Eck has three K's, I believe, right now. So he struck out three out of the first bat, first four batters he's faced. One out, no one on. Milwaukee's designated hitter comes to the plate. Ben Oglevy, another former Red Sox. Oglevy batting 304 in the retro replay, 350 off right-handed pitching. Oglevy's home run swing consists of a dice roll of 956 or higher. To reach base safely, 635 or more. The windup and the pitch to Oglevy. The dice roll. We await the result. 2-1-8. That ball goes out to Dwight Evans. He's under it. He makes the catch in right field. So two up, two down, and Rick Davis steps to the plate. 
the Milwaukee Brewer right fielder is batting 364 retro replay, but only 250 off right-handed pitching. To reach base safely, 739 or higher. His home run swing, 969 or greater. Two outs, no one on. Fisk flashes the sign, the windup, and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. Looking for a 1 2 3 inning here. 3 6 9, that ball goes to Hobson. He backhands it, throws to Scott, inning over. 3 up, 3 down. We go to the bottom of the second, still no score. Due up for the Red Sox. Yastrzemski, Fisk, and Lynn. Captain Carl Yastrzemski has been struggling so far. He's only batting 189 and only 154 off right handed pitching. <clears throat> To reach base safely, 626 or more. Home run swing, 977 or higher. Here's the pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll, 467. That ball goes out to right field to Davis. He's there and he makes the catch for out number one. Carlton Fisk steps to the plate. Fisk batting 361 in the retro replay, 423 off right handed pitching. He's just crushing right handed pitching. Sorensen. And more have to be wary of Carlton Fisk. His home run swing, 972 or greater. To reach safely and advance to first or more, 683 or higher. Moore goes through the signs. Sorensen sets and delivers to Fisk. Here's the dice roll. 525, that ball goes out to Davis in right field, and he's there to make the catch again. So two up, two down, and now. Fred Lynn, the Red Sox center fielder, comes to the plate. Lynn struggles against right-handed pitching, which is strange because he's a left-handed batter, only batting 150 against right-handers, 214 for the year. Lynn's home run swing consists of a dice roll of 961 or higher. To reach safely, 583 or greater. Sorensen wants to keep that underneath that. The dice roll. Here's the pitch to Lynn. We await the result. 2-3-9, that ball goes to Cooper. He fields it and goes to the back himself. Three up, three down. We go to the top of the third. No score. Due up for the Brewers. Bando, Thomas, and Moore. Sal Bando, the Brewers' third baseman, batting 273. Retro replay. 250 off right-handed pitching. To reach safely, 6-8-6 or higher. Home run swing. 9-6-7 or greater. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. Nine oh one. That's the first hit of the ball game. That's a single in the left field. So Bando has the first hit by either team. A leadoff single here in the top of the third. Bando is a possible threat to steal. He would need under a 2-1-0 to get the proper lead. And if he gets that dice roll, under a 6 30 to steal second base. Stepping to the plate, Brewers center fielder Gorman Thomas. Thomas is struggling, 129 average, under 100 against right handed pitching, 0.95. Red Sox would love to turn two here. For Thomas to reach safely, 700 or higher. Home run swing, 939 or better. No outs, Bando at first. Here's the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. 6.05, that ball goes out to Yastrzemski in left field. He comes in on it and he makes the catch for out number one. Bando retreats back to first base. One out, Charlie Moore steps to the plate. Moore's batting 1,000 off right-handed pitching, 286 overall. His home run swing, 9.72 or more to reach safely 709 or higher. Again, the Red Sox look to turn two here. Get out of this inning. Bando's at first. One out here is the pitch to Moore. The dice roll. 5-7-2. Bando tries to steal. He doesn't get the lead. He'll have to stay put. Here's the roll for the swing. 5-7-0. That ball goes to Hobson. He charges it and throws the Scott for out number two. No chance of a double play there. Bando advances to second base. So two outs. 
Paul Molitor steps to the plate, chance to knock in Bando, who's in scoring position. Molitor's 0 for 1 today. And he'll need a 7 6 8 or higher. That would be a single to knock in Bando. Bando will be off on contact with two outs. Remember, the higher the dice roll, the better the result. Here's the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. We await the result. 3-7-4. That ball goes to Hobson. Ground ball to third. Hobson ranges to his left. Throws over to Scott. Inning over. I hold my breath every time a ball's hit to Butch Hobson in 1978. He made a plethora of errors. But not there. So we go to the bottom of the third. Still no score. Due up for the Red Sox. Scott, Evans, and Hobson. The boomer comes to the plate. George Scott batting. 182 in this retro replay and under 100 against right-handed pitching 0.91 I'm sorry 0 0.091 for Scott to reach safely 739 or better home run swing 981 or greater Sorensen wants this dice roll low here's the pitch by Larry 121 one, and it's very low it's a strikeout it's called strike three for the first out of the inning so one out, no one on, and Dwight Evans steps to the plate. The Red Sox right fielder is hitting 379. He walked. No, it's his first time up. I'm sorry. He is hitting 379 and 294 off right-handed pitching. His home run swing consists of a dice roll of 960 or greater. To reach base safely 713 or higher. Sorensen sets and delivers to Evans. One out, no one on. 5-3-9, that ball goes out to center field. Thomas is there, and he makes the catch for out number two. So it'll be up to Butch Hobson to extend this inning. Hobson, ninth place hitter. Trying to get this back up to the top of the order. Hobson does have pop in his bat. Home run swing, 9-7-7 or higher. Reach base safely, 7-1-9 or more. Charlie Moore goes through the signs, the windup, and the pitch by Sorensen. Here's the dice roll. That is gone to left field over the Green Monster. 9-9-6. Nine, nine, the Red Sox take a one nothing lead to the jubilation of the Red Sox crowd here in Fenway Park. So one nothing Boston on the Hobson solo home run with two outs off Larry Sorensen. Rick Burleson steps to the plate now. The Roosters 0 for 1. If you're thinking back-to-back -back jacks, for Burleson to go yard, he needs a 997 to a 999. Very slim possibility here. To reach safely, 757 or higher. Two outs, no one on. Here's the pitch to Burleson. 666. That ball goes to left field. Heisel's there. He leaps and he smashes into the wall. He holds on to the ball. And Burleson is out. As Heisel just kept going back, as the ball kept going back and back and back. And what a catch Heisel made. Much appreciation by Larry Sorensen. Inning over. Red Sox score on the solo home run by Hobson. We go to the top of the fourth. one nothing Boston. Two up for the Brewers. Money, Cooper, and Heisel. Don Money. Second baseman for the Brewers, 0 for 1 today. To reach safely, 7.06 or higher. Home run swing, 9.71 or more. Here's the pitch by the Eck. The dice roll. 5.82, that ball goes out to Yastrzemski. It's shallow ball. Yastrzemski come charging in and he makes the catch. One out. Cecil Cooper steps to the plate. Milwaukee first baseman 0 for 1. For Cooper to tie this up with one swing of the bat, 9-6-1 or higher. That's his home run swing. To reach safely, 6-4-8 or greater. One out. No one on. Fisk goes through the signs. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll.
086. That is a big swing and the miss on the curveball. Another strikeout for the Eck. So two outs, and Larry Heisel steps to the plate, and he made a fabulous catch off Burleson, leaping and crashing into the left field wall to end the bottom of the third. Heisel's 0 for 1. Heisel's home run roll consists of a swing 9, 3, 8, or greater to reach safely 6, 8, 6, or more. Here's the pitch by the Eck, the dice roll. Two outs, no one on. 179, another strikeout. Heisel goes down looking. Inning over. We go to the bottom of the fourth. one nothing Boston. Do up for the Red Sox. Brohammer, Rice, and Yastrzemski. Let's quickly look at the box score here. How many strikeouts is that for Eckersley? Eckersley now has five strikeouts in four innings. He's only given up one hit. Larry Sorensen. His one hiccup, his one hit he's given up, was a home run to Hobson. Thus, the one nothing lead. So Jack Brohammer steps to the plate. Left-handed batter facing the right-handed throwing Sorensen. Brohammer's 0 for 1. For Brohammer to reach safely 7.09 or higher. The windup and the pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll. 9-1-9. Brohammer singles past money into right field to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Brohammer, if you're thinking about stealing second base, would need a dice roll of under 250 to get the proper lead. And then if that happens, he needs under 540 to steal second base. Charlie Moore has a pretty good, has an okay arm. The higher the number when it comes to arm or base running, the worse it is, I believe. So he's a 3. I think the highest rating is either a 4 or a 5, which would be bad. So 3s are like run-of-the-mill average. Jim Rice, 0 for 1, steps to plate. Red Sox designated hitter. His home run swing, 9 4 0 to 9 9 9. To reach safely, 6 7 6 or more. One on, no one out. Here's the pitch to Rice. The dice roll. 2-7-7. Seven, seven. That ball goes to Molitor. Soft ground ball. He has to charge in. Throws the Cooper. Only play was the first. So one out. Rice is retired. Brohammer advances a second. No chance of turning two there. So Brohammer is in scoring position for Captain Carl Yastrzemski, who's been struggling so far in this retro replay early on of 1978. Yaz is 0 for 1. A single could score Brohammer from first, and that would be a 7-2-7 seven, seven or more to reach safely 6-2-6 six, six or higher. Here's the pitch to Yaz. One out, one on. That's a 0-6-6. Six, six. That ball goes to Cooper. He fields it and hustles to the bag himself, beating his Shremsky there. So there's two outs. Brohammer advances to third on the ground ball. So Carlton Fist steps to the plate. Red Sox catcher 0 for 1. Pudge needs a 7-5-2 or more to knock Brohammer in from third with two outs to reach safely 6-8-3 or greater. Sorensen looking to pitch out of this little GM here. The windup and the pitch to Pudge. And Pudge strikes out. That's a 0-5-4. Inning over. Red Sox threaten but do not score. We go to the top of the fifth. one nothing. Boston. Do up for the Brewers, Ogilvy, Davis, and Bando. And let me quickly jump to the chat and say hello to Alan Vanderson. How you doing, my friend? How goes your summer? Thank you for joining me. Oh, Alan says, the music is a nice touch. I like the music, and it's free from YouTube. What's going to happen, Alan, just a little step away from the game, is I'm going to get a copyright hit from some idiot, like I always do, and then I have to fight it because it's free from the YouTube library. I'm undefeated with this, but these idiots constantly hit me with these copyrights. It's hilarious. It's clearly stated free from the YouTube audio library. Anyway, back to the game. Thank you for joining me, Alan. Hope all is well. So Eckersley to face Oglevy here. Oglevy's 0 for 1. To reach base safely, 6-3-5 or higher. To tie this game up with one swing of the bat, Ogilvy needs a 9, 5, 6, or greater. 
Eckersley struck out five. So far? Will Oglavy be another victim? We shall find out. Here's the pitch by the Eck, the dice roll. And he is! 0-4-6, another strikeout. Big swing and a miss for Ben Oglavy. The Eck now has six strikeouts for the game. One out, no one on. Rick Davis comes to play. Davis 0 for 1. For Davis to reach safely, 7-3-9 or higher. To tie this game up, he needs a 9-6-9 or better. And that would deposit the ball out of the ballpark. Fisk flashes the side. Eckersley nods his head. He winds and delivers to Davis. Here's the dice roll. We await the result. One out, no one on. 4-1-6, that ball goes out to Yastrzemski in left field. That's a deep fly ball. Yastrzemski keeps going back on the warning track. He makes the catch. Two up, two down. It's up to Sal Bando to extend this inning. Bando's one for one today. Bando has some pop in his bat. His home run swing would consist of a dice roll of 9-6-7 or higher. To reach safely, 6-8-6 or greater. Eckersley's looking for a 1-2-3 inning here, a possible strikeout victim in Bando. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. Two outs, no one on. one nothing Boston. Top of the fifth. That's a 7-1-1. And that is ball four. So Bando walks. He represents the tying run at first base. And Stormont Gorman Thomas steps to the plate. The Brewer center fielder's 0 for 1. Definitely has pop in his bat. His home run swing, 9-3-9 to 9-9-9. To reach safely 700 or higher. Two outs, one on. Fist flashes the signs. Eckersley nods his head. Here's the pitch to Thomas. The dice roll. Seven two five back to back walks. Eckersley struggling here with his control with two outs in the top of the fifth. Bando the tying runs at second now, and Thomas the go ahead run at first. Let me quickly jump to the chat once again. We have Alan Vanderson in the chat, good friend of the channel. He says he's doing great, very busy. Excellent to hear that, my friend. And he says when I was telling him about the uh, copyright strikes for free music that YouTube lets you use. He says, people are idiots, Al. Yes, they are, Alan. And thank God we're not part of the idiot parade, you and I. And you know who else is not part of the idiot parade? Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. How are you, my friend? And he says, go socks. Remember to check out Higher Ground Gaming. They do. He does wonderful retro replays. Very pleasant. Wonderful person, Eric is. And you might hear from his co-host, Brody, his pug dog. Or Mr. Miller. Glad you can join us, Eric. Hope you're doing well on this late Saturday evening. So, first and second, two outs. Charlie Moore steps to the plate. The Brewer catcher's 0 for 1. To score Bando from second, he'll be off on contact. Both runners will be. There's two outs. Moore needs a single. That's a 7-4-5 or higher. To reach safely, 7-1-4 or more. Eckersley looking to pitch out of this difficulty. The windup and the pitch to Moore. Two outs, two on, one nothing Boston. That's a 2-5-7. That ball goes out to Freddie Lynn. Lynn comes charging in and he makes the catch. Threat ended. Out number three, we go to the bottom of the fifth. The Red Sox won. The Brewers nothing in this pitcher's duel. Due up for Boston. Lynn, Scott, and Evans. Freddie Lynn 0 for 1 today. Sorensen's only given up two hits. But for him and the Brewers, unfortunately, one was a Butch Hobson home run. Lynn to reach safely 5-8-3 or more. To touch them all, 9-6-1 or greater. Here's the pitch to Lynn. The dice roll. 5-1-3, that ball goes to Molitor at short. He charges it, 
picks it up and throws to Cooper, just getting Lynn at first base for the first out of the inning. The boomer, George Scott, steps to the plate. Red Sox first baseman, he's 0 for 1. To reach safely, 7-3-9 or higher. Charlie Moore goes through the signals. Sorensen nods his head. Here's the pitch to the boomer. The dice roll, 7-2-0. That ball goes out to Heisel. That's a deep fly ball. Heisel goes back to the track, and he makes the catch. Boomer just missed that one. So two outs. It's up to Dwight Evans to extend this inning. He's 0 for 1. His home run swing consists of a dice roll of 9-6-0 to 9-9-9. To reach base safely, 7-1-3 or greater. Sorensen sets and delivers to Evans. Here's the dice roll. 7-1-1. That ball goes out to center field. It's a deep fly ball. Thomas continues to go back on it, and he makes the catch. Three up, three down. We go to the top of the six. Red Sox one. Brewers nothing. Two up for Milwaukee. Molitor, Money, and Cooper. Let me jump to the chat in between innings. Um... Al Allen says he didn't know that Eckersley played for the Red Sox. Yes, he came to the Red Sox in 77 from the Cleveland Indians. He won 20 games for him that year. Allen says, guess I'm young. Stay young, Allen. Stay young. Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. Hopefully Hobson won't cough it up in the field, LOL. I hope not. As we know, Eric and I, he was an error machine from 77 to 78. And Alan says, ah, I only remember him as a closer from older highlights. Yes, with the Oakland Athletics, where he got his only World Series victory. I mean, ring. He also gave up one of the biggest home runs, Alan, in uh, World Series history to Kirk Gibson in 88. That was Kirk Gibson's only at bat. It was a home run to win game one. The Dodgers upset the Oakland Athletics that year. So back to the ball game here. one nothing game. Top of the six. Paul Molitor lead off, to lead off the inning. He's 0 for 2. To reach safely 7-4-7 seven, seven or higher. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. We await the result here. 6-8-6. Six, six. That ball goes to Hops and hard ground ball. He throws to Scott. For the first out of the inning, as myself and Eric from Higher Ground Gaming hold our breath, we can breathe now. So one out, Don Money steps to the plate. The Brewers' second baseman's 0 for 2. Money's home run swing consists of a dice roll of 9, 7, 1, or more. To reach base safely, 7, 0, 6, or higher. Here's the pitch to Money, the dice roll. We await the result. 8-2-8, eight, eight, and that's a single into the hole. Yastrzemski fields it and throws it back in towards the infield. So one out. Money represents a tying run at the plate. He's being held on by George Scott. And Cecil Cooper steps to the plate. Cooper's 0 for 2. His home run swing, 9-6-1 or higher. To reach safety, 6-8-3 or more. If you're thinking about a stolen base for Money... He needs to get under a 200 to get the proper lead. And then if he does get that, he's got a pretty good chance of stealing second. He needs under a 720 to make the theft safely. Lefty-righty matchup here. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. One on, one out. The dice roll. one nothing Red Sox, top of the sixth. And he is thrown out, so Money attempts to steal. He got the proper roll to get the lead, but then he rolls a 7-7-3, which is higher than his steal ratio. And Fisk guns him out for the second out of the inning. So bases are empty now for Cecil Cooper. It's going to take a big blow by Cooper to tie this game up now. The windup and the pitch to Cooper. Two outs, no one on. 1-0 Red Sox. 
That's a 197. That ball goes to Scott. He grabs it, flips to Eckersley, covering, and Cooper is out, inning over. So the big play that inning is money being thrown out by Carlton Fisk at second. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Boston one, Milwaukee nothing. Due up for the Red Sox. Hobson, Burleson, and Brohammer. Hobson is one for one with that home run and the only RBI in this game. It's been quite a pitcher's duel. Both teams have only been able to muster up two hits apiece. For the Red Sox, they are fortunate enough to have a Hobson home run and lead 1-0. For Hobson to get his second home run of the game, he needs a 9-7-7 or more to reach base safely 7-1-9 or higher. Sorensen sets and delivers to Hobson. Here's the dice roll. 3-2-4. That ball goes to Molitor at short. He charges it and fires to Cooper. Just getting Hobson. Hobson argues a bit, but now goes to the bench. So one up, one down. Rick Burleson, the rooster, comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2 to reach safely 7-5-7 or greater. Moore flashes the signs. Sorensen nods his head. He winds and delivers to Burleson the dice roll. And that's a 0-0-0. That's a big old swing and a miss and a strikeout for out number 2. Jack Brohammer comes to the plate, left-handed batting second baseman. He's one for two off Sorensen today. Sorensen's ERA has now dropped to 0. Point, no, has gone up, actually. 0. 0.79. It was lower than that, but the Hobson homer brings it up slightly. Brohammer to reach safely 709 or greater. Two outs, no one on. Here's the pitch to Jack Brohammer. Here's the dice ball. 317. That ball goes out to center field. It's a deep fly ball. Thomas continues to go back on it. He reaches up, makes the catch, inning over. We go to the top of the seventh. one nothing. Boston. Due up for Milwaukee. Heisel, Oglavy, and Davis. Let me quickly go to the chat. And uh, Eric from Higher Ground Gaming says, Phew! That was on the Hobson play from a little while back when he made another good throw to first. Larry Heisel steps to the plate. He's a power hitter. He can tie it up with one big pop. He's 0 for 2, though. And he would need a dice roll of 9, 3, 8, or more. And this ball game would be tied up. To advance safely to first, or better, 6, 8, 6, or higher. Here's the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. A 9-3-3, that's a double off the left field wall, so Heisel will be in scoring position with no outs. A leadoff double, Ben Ogilvy steps to the plate. Ogilvy's 0 for 2, another dangerous power hitter, former Red Sox. One swing of the bat by Ogilvy, it could be a 2-1 ball game, 9-5-6 or more. A single... Might score Heisel. That's a 7-2-2 or higher. To reach safely 6-3-5 or greater. Eckersley looking for a strikeout here. Wants to keep Heisel at second. Does not want him to advance to third. The windup and the pitch to Oglevy. The dice roll. No outs. Heisel at second. one nothing Red Sox. 9-9-2, that ball is going, going, gone. That's a bomb to dead center. 2-0 Oglevy. Well, 2-0 Milwaukee on the Oglevy homer. So Eckersley gives up only his fourth hit of the game. And it's a two-run blast to center by Ben Oglevy. The Brewers take the lead 2-1. to one. Fenway Park has gotten awfully quiet. As Eric from Higher Ground Gaming goes, ouch. And before that, he said Milwaukee's got power. Run is nothing. I agree, and we are proving correct. So no outs. Davis comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2. To reach safely, 7-3-9 or more. To go back-to-back -back jacks, 9-6-9 or higher. Eckersley sets and delivers to Davis. Here's the dice roll. Looking to get the first out of the inning here. 2-1 lead. That's a 0-7-5. That's a big swing and the miss on the fastball. So one out. And Bando comes to the plate. 
He's one for one with a walk. Eckersley wanting to work quickly. Bando needs a 686 or higher to reach safely. Here's the pitch to Bando, the dice roll. 2 1 Brewers. 5 3 8. That ball goes to Freddie Lynn in center field. He's there and he makes the catch. So there's two outs now, no one on, and Stormin Gorman Thomas steps to the plate. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Thomas's home run swing consists of a roll of a 9-3-9 or more to reach base safely 7-0-5 or higher. Eckers is looking to get the last out of this inning. Gets the sign from Fisk. He sets and delivers to Thomas. The dice roll. 6-8-5. That ball is going out to Evans in right field. He drifts to his right, makes the catch. Inning over. As the organist plays, take me out to the ball game. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Milwaukee has taken a 2-1 lead on the Ben Oglevy blast to center. Due up for the Red Sox, Rice, Yastrzemski, and Fisk. Larry Sorensen still on the mound. For the Brewers, he has faced 20 batters. His threshold is 32, so he's still in good shape. Jim Rice comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Rice looking something that he can yank out of the ballpark here. 940 or higher, and that's a home run. 681 or more, and he reaches safely. Sorensen delivers to Rice. Here's the dice roll. That's a 283. That ball is going out to center field. That's a deep fly ball. But Thomas runs it down for out number one. Carl Yastrzemski steps to the plate. Yeah, he's struggling, struggling. Only batting 179 on the season and only 143 off right-handed pitching in this retro replay. But Yastrzemski can turn that all around. He can put one out of the ballpark. 9-7-7 or higher in this ball game's tie. To reach safely, 6-2-6 or greater. Here's the pitch by Sorensen, the dice roll. That's a 7.05. Yastrzemski earns himself a walk. Excellent patience by, patience by Yaz. He represents a tying run at first base. Carlton Fisk steps to the plate. Red Sox catcher 0 for 2. He represents the go-ahead run at the plate. Let's see if he can go one swing of the bat and the Red Sox can retake the lead. He's looking for a 9.72 or more. Here's the pitch to Fisk. One out, one on. That's a 6-3-2. And that ball goes off Moore's glove. It's going to be a pass ball, so Yastrzemski advances to second. He's now in scoring position. Fisk is still at the plate. Fisk is still at the plate. All righty. He's in scoring position. So we set and do it again. The windup and the pitch to Pudge. One out, one on. 5-2-1. That ball goes out to Thomas. That's a deep fly ball. He keeps going back on it. He makes a check catch at the warning track. And Yastrzemski will stay at second. Uh, I was hoping an opportunity to tag up there, but I guess not. So two out, and it's going to be up to Freddie Lynn, who has been awful against right-handed pitching so far in this retro replay, only batting 136. And I think we're going to take a look at our bench. I never thought I would pinch it for Freddie Lynn. <laughs> but we want to beat the Yankees in this retro replay. So every win's important. So we're looking at our bench. And we only have three players on our bench. Bernie Carbo, Jerry Remy, and Frank Duffy. Who hit right-handed pitching. Remy, 298. Not a home run threat, though. Carbo, 256. And he, he would be a home run threat. But I think we're going to go with Remy. The problem is, who can play center field? Carbo can play center field, but I'm sure it's dreadful. Let's just take a look. Yeah, his error percentage, 2.8. That's not tr that bad. He's actually worse than left field. Oh, 
Okay, I think we're going to have Jerry Remy pinch hit for Freddie Lynn. As the Red Sox need to knock in this tying run. And here comes Jerry Remy. So Freddie Lynn comes back to the bench. Jerry Remy comes out there. Remy's hitting 320 in this retro replay off right-handed pitching. Tying run in Yastrzemski's at second base. Two outs. So Jerry Remy's day off is over. He can tie this ball game up. He needs a 7-0-3 or higher. That's a single. And with two outs, Yastrzemski's going on contact to reach base safely 6-5-6 six, six or more. The windup and the pitch to Remy. Here's the ever-important dice roll. That's an 8-7-4, and that's a single in the left field. Let's see if we can score. Yeah, it's going to be tough. And Yastrzemski does score. No throw even by Heisel. This ball game is tied up at two. Clutch pinch hit by Jerry Remy. Jump to the chat. Oh, Alan asks, who is your favorite player of all time? That's a good question. I have lots of favorite players. Right? I I've always been fascinated by Tony Caligniero for the Red Sox just because of such a tragic, tragic end to his career when he got beamed in the eye. I love Ted Williams. Um, I like Willie Mays. I'm trying to think who else. Dom DiMaggio, brother of Joe, played for the Red Sox. Loved Freddie Lynn when I was a kid. Jim Rice, still love Jim Rice. Uh, oh, Mark the Bird Fidrich, who was a, a pitch for the uh, Detroit, loved him. He was from Massachusetts. He was actually on Sesame Street when I was a kid. The Bird, he looked like Big Bird. That's why they called him the Bird. So many players, I... I'm trying to think of one more before I go back to the game. I always liked watching Reggie Jackson. Hated that he played for the Yankees. I love Pedro Martinez, one of my favorite. Louis Tian. Oh, so many, so many. Oh, Yastrzemski also. Uh, Eric from Higher Grand Gaming says, I think Yaz. I, I just like a lot of players. I don't know if I could pick one. I'd have to really think about that. How about you, Alan? So, all right, back to the game. Remy's at first. He represents a go-ahead run. George Boomer Scott steps to the plate. One, uh, two-two ball game here. Two outs. Cooper's holding Remy on. He's definitely a threat to steal. Scott's been struggling in this retro replay. He only, he's only batting. 0 .083 off right-handers, but I don't have anyone who can play first. Let me go back to the bench here. Yep, no one can play first. <laughs> well, I could move... No, I can't do that. Can't do that. Because Bernie Carver is going to have to come in and play center field. Ooh, I wonder if Brohammer can play the outfield. Cancel. Bear with me a moment. Box score. Don't want that. Got to go to lineup. Let's see if Jack Brohammer, for some reason, I think he can. I could be totally wrong. Nope. Second and third. Okay. All right. So Jerry Remy, he's a threat to steal. So we're going to attempt to steal here with Remy and two outs. Cooper holding him on. So we need under a 440 to get the proper lead. We get that, and now we get the 672, which is under 700, and Remy steals second base, and he's in scoring position. Oh, yes. Are you, Alan says his favorite player never played for the Yankees. It's Vlad. Vladimir Guerrero you're talking about, right? Oh, he was a wonderful player. So many good players. I love baseball. So Remy is the go-ahead run at second, two outs, and the Boomer can turn around his horrible season so far um, with an RBI here to put the Red Sox ahead. 
Boomer needs an 8.05 or better to knock Remy in. To reach base safely, 7.39 or more. Two outs. Remy at second. Here's the pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll. 6.85. That ball goes to Molitor. It's a ground ball. He dives, gets back up, and throws to Cooper. And they just get Scott at first base, ending the inning. But the Red Sox tie it up on the Jerry Remy pinch hit single. It's 2-2. Two to two. Do up for the Brewers. In the top of the eighth, more Molitor and money. So, I think what we're going to do... I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep Jerry Remy in the game. So, I would have to replace Brohammer with Carbo. And let him play center. Alright, so Bro, uh, Carbo is going to go in the two spot. And he's going to play center field. Jerry Remy will play second base. Carbo. I wonder if it's better to put Evans in center field. And let Car you know what? Carbo's playing center field. Let's see what Evans is. 2.6 error. Wow, his arms are four. Am I reading that one? Right field. Wow. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna keep Carbo in center field. Just hope that God no one hits on the ball. Okay, we're gonna say okay. All right, so we have a change in defensive alignment here. Bernie Carbo goes out to center field, replacing Fred Lynn. Jerry Remy stays in the game, replacing Brohammer at second after his pinch hit RBI single. Dwight um, Dennis Eckersley is now up to 27 batters. His threshold is 32. 2-2 two -two ball game. We go to the top of the eighth. Charlie Moore comes to the plate to reach base safely, 7-1-4 or higher. For one swing of the bat, to put the Brewers ahead once again, 9, 7, 2, or more, as in Charlie Moore. Ba boom boom The wind-up and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. Let's keep it low if you're a Red Sox fan. 6, 7, 7. That ball goes to Burleson. He scoops it up and throws to Scott for the first out of the inning. Yeah, Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. Uh, the only reason why I didn't move to Evans to center is because he's such a good right fielder in this game. I might as well stick with Carbo, who's slightly poorer in center than Evans. So, And Yaz, I'm keeping in left because he's outstanding in left field. So one out, Paul Molitor steps to the plate. Molitor reach base safely, 7-4-7 seven, seven or higher. To touch them all, 8-9-8-2 eight, eight, or more. Here's the pitch by the act, the dice roll. Let's keep this roll low. Oh, the, wow, they're going to pinch hit for Paul Molitor. The computer is going to pinch hit for Paul Molitor. <laughs> wow. That makes no sense. Sixto Lescano comes in. He's only batting 125 off right-handed pitching. Thank you, computer. I think they did this because his home run... I think his home run swings better. 962 or more. To reach base safely, 685 or higher. So Lescano to pinch hit. One out, no one on. Here's the pitch by Eckersley. Here's the dice roll. 2-2 two to two ball game, top of the eighth. 714. Lescano works a walk. He's a threat to steal. Lascano needs under a 220 to get the proper lead and under a 590 to steal second base. Allen says, wow. I think he says, wow, about the pinch inning of Molitor. I, I agree. The computers, when you play these games, they do funny things sometimes. I don't know what their algorithm is, uh, but that's wow. Eric from Higher Ground Gaming and Strat, there is a bigger difference in the Red Sox outfield defensively. 
Oh, you mean with their their capabilities? Okay. All right, one out, one on. Lascano represents a go-ahead run at first. Don Money, one for three today. To reach base safely, 701 or more. To put the Brewers up by two with one swing of the bat, 971 or greater. Red Sox want a double play ball here. Get out of this inning. The windup and the pitch by Eckersley. The dice roll. Lascano's being held on. That's an 8-6-7. That's a single in the left field. Let's see if Lascano holds at second. As the Estremski couldn't get there in time. And Lascano is being held up by the third base coach. So first and second now. One out. And the dangerous Cecil Cooper comes to the plate. He's 0 for 3 and only batting 207 off right-handed pitching. Eckersley is now up to 30 batters. His threshold is 32. I don't really like our bullpen in 78. I actually used Eckersley uh, two games ago to get one out in the ninth. He actually has a save this year. Um, I'm going to stick with the Eck. Cooper's 0 for 3 off of him. One out, two on. Here's the pitch to Cooper and the dice roll. We await the result in this tie ball game, top of the eighth. Uh-oh. Lascano attempts to steal, but he doesn't get a good lead. He'll stay put. That's a 1-1-9. A big strikeout by Eckersley. Big swing and a miss, and Cooper goes to sit down on the bench. That's strikeout number eight on the day for the Eck. That was huge. Clutch pitching by Eckersley in his tie ball game. And he'll face the dangerous batter Larry Heisel, who's one for three with a run score. Heisel would need a 7-7-3 or higher, and that's a single or better, to score Lascano from second. Again, the runners will be off on contact with two outs to reach base safely 6-8-6 six, six or more. Eckersley has now faced 31 batters out of 32. Fisk goes out to the mound, has a word with the Eck, now goes back behind the plate. The windup and the pitch to Heisel. Two outs, two on, 2-2 two -two ball game, top of the eighth. Here's the pitch and the dice roll. Red Sox fans hold their breath. 8-1-8, eight, eight, and that's a single in left field. Let's see if Lascano can score on this. Here's the roll. Here's the throw. And Fisk cannot hold on the ball. Lascano scores the go-ahead run. Money and Heisel advance on the throw to the plate that got away from Fisk. It's now 3-2 Brewers. So they come back and take the lead in the top of the eighth. What a ball game this has been, folks. Ben Ogilvy comes up plate. He homered off the Eck. He's one for three, a home run, and two RBIs. That homer came at the top of the seventh. Eckersley's at his threshold. Let's take a look at our bullpen here, folks. Yes, Eric, another one of those rare plays. They need to do something about that. I know we've discussed it before. I'd like to see a flashing or a separate dice roll pop up or something. I like this game a lot, to be honest with you. I downloaded another game and tried it out, a dice game, a PC replay baseball or something. I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't. I gotta try it a couple more times, but I didn't like it. I couldn't tell where they're pulling their numbers from. At least this, I understand a bit. So, and you know, I play a lot of action PC baseball and out of the ballpark baseball. Some people think it's just clicking a. A button and not thinking. Yeah, you can play that way if you want, but there's a lot of statistics in those games. They just don't show it on that one page that you're looking at. You have to understand beforehand, you know, in those games. So, but I didn't like that PC. Let me just. It's called PC Replay Baseball. I, I downloaded the free demo. You can play 20% of the season. I just, I don't know. I didn't care for it. I'll give it another try, I guess. All right, two outs. Runners at second and third. Those are important insurance runs here for the Brewers. Ben Ogilvy comes to play. Who's up next? Do we want to walk the bases loaded? Dick Davis is up. 
think we handle Davis a little better. Davis on the retro replays batting 240. Oh, that's real life. Let's go simulated. Now he's batting 286, but only 182 off right handed pitching. Something to think about here, folks. Oglevy 348. We're going to intentionally walk Oglevy. This could come back to bite us in a hard way. We're going to walk the bases loaded. So Fisk puts his arm out. They walk Oglevy. Bases are loaded. They will now face Rick Davis, who's 0 for 3 and only batting 182 off right-handed pitching. This is a huge moment in the game here for the Red Sox. Eckersley is 1 over his threshold. He'll stay in the game. No place to put Davis. To reach safely, 7-3-9 or higher. If he does, another run would score. Eck wants to be below that. The windup and the pitch to Davis. Two outs, bases jam. 3-2 lead Brewers, top of the eighth. Here's the dice roll. Four, five, eight. That ball goes to Hops, and we're still holding our breath. Soft ground ball. Very slow to react. Ah. Uh, infield hit. Butch Hobson does not make the play. We got a result. We got a ground ball. Hobson doesn't make the play. Four to two. RBI for Davis. Hobson's slow reaction cost the Red Sox a run. And now brings Sal Bando to the plate. And I think that's going to be it for Dennis Eckersley. 34 out of 32 now. He's two over his threshold. Brewers have a two-run lead. Bando's one for two with a walk. Let's check out our bullpen here. Ah, oh, man. Let's look at all of our pitchers. I really don't like the Red Sox bullpen in 78. Campbell. Actually, let me cancel this for a second. Let me take a look. Well, he hits 308 off lefties. Do we stick with Eckersley for one more batter? See how Drago does against um, Spando. Let's go to the bench coach. Punching Dick Drago here. So 686. 681. Drago does a little better. Let's see how Campbell does. Campbell does a lot worse. So Campbell's just going to stay in the bullpen. Let's see how Bob Steamer Stanley does. 672. I think Drago's the best option. 681. I'm just looking at reaching base safely. Uh, Dick Drago will come out of the pen and try to keep this a two-run game here, folks. So Dick Drago will come in. Eckersley's done. Let's look at Eckersley's final numbers here. He's responsible for all the runners on base right now. Let's go to the box score. Again, Eckersley's responsible for the runners on base. Bases are loaded. Eckersley went seven and two-thirds innings, seven hits, four runs all earned, walked four, struck out eight, gave up one home run to Ben Oblivy. So Dick Drago looking to pitch the Red Sox out of the frying pan here. As Eric from Higher Ground Gaming says, uh, Campbell is better against lefties. Yes, he is. And he says, PC replay baseball is expensive too. Yes, it is. So I really have to enjoy it if I'm going to buy it because... Um, Action PC Baseball is a bit pricey, the Dave Koch games, but I love them. And Out of the Ballpark is just absolutely wonderful at a good price. It's on sale right now on Steam. So if you haven't bought that yet and you're a baseball fan and you enjoy sim games, $20, you get everything. The 
again, that's more of an open world type game. You can play it straight up though. You can play historical transactions and everything. You have to set that before you start the game though. All right, bases loaded up to Dick Drago to get the Red Sox out of the jam here. They'll face Sal Bando. Bando's one for two with a walk. Bando to reach safely six eight one or more. Drago wants under that. He wants a six eight zero or lower. The windup and the pitch to Bando. No place to put him. Four two ball game. Brewers. Two outs. Here's the dice roll. What will Drago do? 7-3-6, he walks in a run. It's now 5-2, so the Red Sox pitching has gone poo-poo in the top of the eighth. Base is still loaded, Gorman Thomas steps to the plate, 0 for 2 with a walk. Fitz goes out to have a word with Drago, goes back behind the plate. Thomas, 7-0-1 or higher to reach safely. For a grand salami... Nine, five, eight, or more. The windup and the pitch to Thomas. The dice roll. Eight, one, nine. Drago walks in another batter. Another run. Oh, God. He did this a few games back. That's why I brought Dennis Eckersley in two games ago to get one out in the ninth. So it's now six to two. Charlie Moore comes to plate. He's 0 for 3. Once again, the Red Sox start thinking about going to their bullpen. Come on, Drago. Get this last out. Charlie Moore needs a 7-0-1 or more. And he will have an RBI. Two outs. No place to put Charlie. Drago needs to get these pitches over the plate. He sets and delivers. Here's the dice roll. Five seven three. Burleson ranges to his right, throws to Scott. Inning over. Four runs though for Milwaukee on three hits, three runners left on base. The walks killed him in the end. The Brewers now lead the Red Sox six to two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Do up for the Red Sox. Evans, Hobson, and Burleson, and they'll continue to face Larry Sorensen, who is. Face 25 batters. His threshold is 32, so he's still going strong. As Eric from Higher Ground Gaming says, Say it ain't so, Drago. Oh, very good. Very good, Eric. Evans, 0 for 2. Needs to get something started here. Reach safely 7-1-3 or higher. The pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll. 9-1-5. That's a double down the right field line. So Evans is on. That's what the Red Sox need here. Base runners. Butch Hobson comes to the plate. Hobson, one for two. One home run. One RBI. Hobson would love to go yard once again off Sorensen. Sorensen to reach... Uh, Hobson to reach safely off Sorensen. 7-1-9 or greater. Evans at second. No outs. The windup and the pitch to Butch Hobson. The dice roll. That's... 992 that ball is going going gone to center field hops in second home run of the game Red Sox pulled it within two runs six to four that's a bash so Rick Burleson comes to the plate now 0 for three as the Fenway fans are still a buzz by the Hobson two run blast to pull them within two Sorensen is now struggling. Burleson 0 for 3, as I said. Needs to get a 7-5-7 seven, seven or more to reach base safely. If he does, the tying run would come to the plate. The windup and the pitch by Sorensen. The dice roll, 7-4-8. It's a shallow pop-up. Charlie Moore, the catcher, throws his mask off, makes the catch, and Burleson is out number one. So Bernie Carbo, who came in defensively when Jerry Remy pinched hit and tied the game up in the bottom of the seventh, plays center field for Freddie Lynn. Carbo's batting 250 off right-handed pitching. He is a home run threat, 9-8-4 or more. 
Carbo needs to get on base though, and that's a 6-6-6 or higher. One out, no one on. The windup and the pitch to Bernie Carbo. The dice roll. 7-2-0. Carbo works a walk. So Jim Rice comes to the plate. Rice represents the tying run. Eric from Higher Ground Gaming in the chat. Remember to check out his channel. Higher Ground Gaming. Wonderful retro replay of sports. Such as Action PC Baseball, Digital Diamond Baseball, Stratomatic Baseball, and others. He says two home runs for Hobson, no errors. A career day. Actually, no errors in a game for Hobson could be a career day. LOL. That is so true. So Jim Rice steps to the plate. The MVP of 1978. He's 0 for 3. A swing of the bat and this ball game can be tied up. And that needs a dice roll of 9-4-0 or higher. To reach safely, 6-7-6 six, six or more. Sorensen still on the mound. He's faced 29 batters out of his 32. Carbo's at first. He walked. One out. Here's the pitch to Rice. The dice roll. 7-8-0. That's a single to center. Carbo advances to second. And we're going to hold him there. As we need under a dice roll of 100. And we're not going to chance that. So first and second. Rice singles for his first hit of the game. And Carl Yastrzemski steps to the plate. Yaz is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. He scored ahead of the Bur of the Hobson. No, I'm sorry. Hobson was a solo shot. So first and second. So Yastrzemski scored in the third. Then. All right. For Yaz to yank one out of the ballpark, he needs a 9-7-7 to a 9-9-9. To reach base safely, 6-2-6 six, six or better. Sorensen struggling right now. Shremsky needs the break out of his slump. The windup and the pitch to Yaz, one out, two on. Here's the dice roll, 6-5-1, Yastrzemski works a walk. It's the Red Sox turn to have bases loaded. Sorensen's on the ropes here. Red Sox looking for the knockout blow with Carlton Fisk. Red Sox catcher, 0 for 3. To reach base safely, Pudge needs a 6, 8, 3 or more. Moore goes out and has a word with Sorensen on the mound. Brewers start their bullpen. The windup and the pitch to Fisk. One out. Red Sox trailing by two. Bases juiced. Here's the pitch and the dice roll. 2-6-6. Six, six. That ball goes out to Thomas in center field. He catches it for the out. And we're going to tag up. Carbo will tag from third. We need to roll under a 750. Here comes the throw. And Carbo is in there safely. He scores on the fly ball. It is now 6-5. to five. RBI sacrifice fly for Carlton Fisk. What a ball game, folks. What a ball game. It went from a pitcher's duel to a slugfest. Rice represents the tying run on second. Yastrzemski the go-ahead run at first. And Jerry Remy is at the plate. Jerry Remy came off the bench. His day off suddenly became a day at work. With his pinch hit RBI single to tie the game in the bottom of the seventh. It's up to the Rem Dog now to tie it up once again. Remy needs a 7-0-3 or more to do so. There are two outs. Runners will be off on contact to reach base safely 6-5-6 six, six or higher. Sorensen still on the mound for the Brewers. He's now reached his th threshold. 32 for 32 batters faced. The windup and the pitch by Remy. The dice roll. Red Sox training by one. That's a 6 1 5. That's a hard line drive right back at Sorensen, and he makes the catch, robbing Remy of a base hit up the middle. And this ball game stays tied as we go to the top of the ninth. Brewers 6. Red Sox 5. Due up for Milwaukee. Gantner, Money, and Cooper. 
Dick Drago is still on the mound, we might go away from Drago. Let's see if Drago can get this first out here. So Gantner comes up. It's his first at-bat of the season. Or of the game. Let's check if it's, if it's his first at-bat for the season. Nope, he's been up once before without a hit. So Gantner to reach base safely. 7-2-8 or higher. Here's the pitch by Drago. Milwaukee leading by one, top of the ninth. The dice roll. 0-0-9, zero, zero, that's a strikeout. Big swing and a miss, so Drago, no walk so far, thank God. One out, no one on, Don Money steps to the plate. Money's been money, two for four with a run scored. To reach base safely, 7-0-1 or higher. Fisk flashes the sign, the windup, and the pitch by Drago, the dice roll. Seven, seven, three. Oh my God! And here comes the bugaboo walks again. So money's on with one out. Drago is now five batters in. Threshold of nine. Cecil Cooper, who's 0 for four, comes to the plate. Red Sox once again get bullpen action up. Cooper to reach safely. Six, two, four, or more. Red Sox looking to get two for one and out of the inning. Scott is holding on money. He is a threat to steal. The windup and the pitch by Drago. The dice roll. Let's see first if money's going to attempt to steal, though. He needs under a 250. He doesn't get it. He'll stay put. Now the dice roll for Cooper. 8 2 1. That's a single to right field. Evans can't get to that line drive. And money will hold at second. They won't challenge Evans' arm. So, first and second. One out, and that's going to be it for Drago. We've seen enough of his poop. Let's go back to our poopy bullpen. Okay. Actually, let me cancel this for a second. I like to have this up. So we have righty, lefty, Ogilvy. Back to the bullpen now. Bergmeier's a lefty, not going to use him. I guess we're going to have to go to Stanley. Alright, let's see what Stanley does against Larry Heisel. I like this bench coach thing. Even if you don't understand... I'm not really 100% on the percentages. Eric from Higher Ground Gaming was explaining to it. And Eric says Stanley. Yeah, that's what we're going to go with. And these are percentages of, of the combination of batter versus pitcher together. And then one of them is just the batter by its, himself, I believe. And Eric has been kind enough to try to explain that to me. I wish they were a little more clearer with this. I just use the number, the dice roll range, which is good enough. Again, very nice game for $20. I love it. Thank you to Beatles Eternally for turning me on to this game and Eric. Okay. Right, we're just gonna right, we're gonna go to Stanley. That's our best option. I really don't like the 78 Red Sox bullpen. I told you I used two starting pitchers to get two outs in the ninth inning two games ago. Lee to get the lefty and Eckersley to get the righty to get a win. I know that's unorthodox, but I'm playing the game, so. <laughs> All right, so Bob Stanley will come in to pitch. Replacing Dick Drago, who struggled in his relief appearance. Back to the matchup. First and second, one out. Stanley looking to try to get that ground ball to get two for one and out of the inning. Keep this a one-run deficit. Heisel, two for four. One RBI, two runs scored, and he's batting 355 off right-handed pitching. Heisel needs a 6-7-3 or higher to reach base safely. Stanley wants a low dice roll here. The windup and the pitch to Heisel. The dice roll. Come on, Stanley Steamer. 3-4-5. That ball goes to Scott. 
Hard ground ball. He steps on the first base bag, and that's it. He only got the one runner at first, so two outs. Runners advance. Monday's now at third. Cooper's at second. Two outs, two on, and Ben Ogilvy comes to the plate. Oh, God. Ogilvy's one for three. He crushes right-handed pitching at a 348 clip. He's already homered off Eckersley. We might go to Soup Campbell. Let's just check that out now. Or Bergmeier. We might go to Bergmeier. Lefty lefty matchup. Let's go to bench coach. Let's see what Bergmeier does here. We gotta keep this at a one run deficit. Actually, Bergmeier's worse. Alrighty. Let's see what Campbell is. Campbell is even worse. We're gonna stick with Bob Stanley. So two outs, Milwaukee has runners at second and third, Cooper at second, Money at third, Oglevy at the plate, Oglevy needs a 6-3-2 or higher to reach base safely to knock in two runs as runners will be off on contact with two outs, Oglevy needs a 7-1-4 or more. Stanley trying to get the last out of this inning, again keeping it a one run game, the wind up and the pitch to Oglevy, the dice roll. The ever important result. 6 8 3 and another walk by Red Sox pitching. Bases are loaded for Dick Davis. Actually, this isn't a bad matchup. He only bats 250 against right handed pitching. So that result's not horrible. Unless Stanley walks another batter. Davis needs a 7-3-6 or more to reach base safely, and in that case, Milwaukee would have another insurance run. Two outs, base is juice, no place to put Dick Davis. The wind-up and the pitch by Stanley, the dice roll. Three three eight. that ball goes to Remy, ground ball, and he throws the Scott inning over. Stanley works out of the jam. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Milwaukee 6, Boston 5. Two up for the Red Sox. Scott, Evans, and Hobson. Hobson has already hit two home runs. Yes, Eric from Higher Ground Gaming says... In 1978, the Sox bench is pretty bad, too. Yes, and they traded away Bernie Carbo, which is stupidity in 78. I know he had a drug problem, and that was probably the reason. But Carbo and Lee did not get along with uh, manager Don Zimmer. All right, so George Scott steps to the plate. Scott's 0 for 3 and struggles mightily against right-handed pitching. And Milwaukee has gone to Bill Castro, and I believe this is their closer. Let me click on that. Let's look at the real stats. He had eight saves, so he definitely was a closer, not necessarily their primary closer. But he's coming in to get the save here. And 78, five wins, four losses, eight saves, ERA of 1.18. And simulated, let's see what he's doing simulated. He has one save and four innings pitched, ERA of 4.50. All right. Here we go. Castro versus the Boomer. Scott needs a 6-9-3 or higher to reach base safely. To tie this game up, one swing of the bat, 9-7-6 or more. The windup and the pitch to the Boomer. Here's the dice roll. 1-6-1. That ball goes out to money at second base. It's a pop-up. He calls for it. He makes the catch for out number one. So Scott goes 0 for 4 and his struggles in 1978 continue. Yes, that is true. I watched Bernie, uh, Eric in Higher Ground Gaming says Carbo turned his life around. Strong Christian now. Yes. It's very sad how the drugs ruined his life. It, it, just to quickly go to Bernie Carbo for a second. Uh, he hits the game-tying home run in Game 6 of the 75 World Series to which Fisk hits the game-winning home run in extra innings. Again, if it's not for Carbo, there's no Fisk homer. I watched a documentary on him where he says after that game he's wandering the Boston streets to try to get high. 
that's really sad. So, but he has turned his right life around. God bless him. And, uh, he's controlling his demons. So one out, no one on. Dwight Evans comes to plate. He's one for three with a run scored. He's batting 300 off right-handed pitching. And for Evans to tie the game with one swing of the bat, dice roll of 9, 5, 4, or greater to reach safely 6, 6, 7, or more. The windup and the pitch by Castro. 6 to 5 Milwaukee, one out in the bottom of the ninth. The dice roll, we await the result. 3, 8, 4, that ball goes to Bando at third. Line drive, Bando dives and makes the catch, robbing Evans of extra base hit. So two outs, and the man of the hour comes to the plate, Butch Hobson. Two for three with two home runs, three RBIs, two runs scored. Can Hobson get his third round tripper and tie this ball game up? Or can Castro deny him and get the save and the win for the Brewers? Hobson needs a 9-7-1 or higher for his third home run of the game to reach safely 6-6-3 or greater. Moore goes out to the mound, has a work with Castro, now goes back behind the plate. The windup and the pitch to Butch Hobson. Here's the dice roll. 5-9-3, that ball goes to Monday. He backhands it, throws to Cooper, and this ball game is over. The Brewers come up with The Brewers come up with four runs in the eighth that help propel them to a 6-5 victory. Tough loss for the Red Sox. Red Sox battled back to get three in the bottom of the eighth, but fell one short. Or a bridge too far, if anyone knows that movie or military history. So, Eric from Higher Ground Gaming showed me something. Alan at... Uh, Vanderson in the chat says good he's turned it around yes it is Eric says Carbo was the Reds number one pick the year he was drafted yeah he, he had tremendous talent he just wasted away with the drugs and the alcohol so Eric from Higher Ground Gaming showed me something that if I hit exit and finalize this game I can go to a better box score and I'm going to do that so we're going to make this game official. As much as I don't want to, I'm going to. Milwaukee wins 6-5, to five, so I'm going to hit exit. Make this game official. Go back to scheduled games. And I'll be playing another game, but it'll be tomorrow. Because uh, we're going to play the Orioles and Yankees. Dennis Martinez versus Ron Kidry. That's going to be coming up on the station. And possibly the Reds and Dodgers. I like playing the Reds and Dodgers. They're always a fun game. So now if I click on... You can see the 6-5 victory for Milwaukee. If I click on this, Eric has shown me I get a more complete box score, which is much cooler. Gives us the batting average. All right, so let's go to the pitching first. Larry Sorensen gets the win. He's now three wins, no losses. He went eight innings. Six hits, five runs. They were all earned. Three walks, three strikeouts. He gave up two home runs to Butch Hobson. His ERA is now 2.16. Castro comes in, gets his second save. He pitched a scoreless ninth. His ERA is now 3.60. For the Red Sox, Dennis Eckersley takes the loss. He's now one win, one loss. Eck went seven and two-thirds innings. Seven hits, six runs, all earned. Walked four, struck out eight. One home run. His ERA now goes up to 5.09. The Eckersley struggle inning uh, was the top of the eighth, where the Red Sox pitching just totally fell apart. Dick Drago came in, pitched two-thirds of an inning. I know he didn't give up any runs. All those runs were for Eckersley, but he pitched awful. Three walks, one strikeout, and one hit. His ERA is 1.93. Bob Stanley came in, pitched the final two-thirds of the game, walked one, and that was it. No runs. ERA 4.50. Uh, player of the game. I'm giving it to Butch Hobson on the losing team. He had two home runs. 
I'm going to give it to Butch Hobson. Let me just take a look at Milwaukee. I mean, Heisel went two for five. Ogilvy. Ben Ogilvy had to... You know what? I'm going to give co-players of the game. Ogilvy on the winning team and Hobson on the losing team with big home runs. Ogilvy went uh, one for three, but had that big two-run homer. I still think Hobson had the better day, but... That was a big hit. So the box score for the visiting Milwaukee Brewers. Molitor 0 for 3 struck out once. Lascano came in to pinch hit. He was he walked and scored a run. So that worked out for Milwaukee, even though we questioned why Molitor was being pinch hit for. Gittner came in to play short. He had one at bat. Money, the second baseman, 2 for 4. One run scored, one walk, one strikeout. Cooper, 1 for 5 with two strikeouts. Heisel, 2 for 5, 2 runs scored, 1 RBI, 2 strikeouts. Oglevy, 1 for 3, 2 runs scored, 2 RBIs, 2 walks, 1 strikeout. Davis, 1 for 5, 1 RBI, 1 strikeout. Wolford came in to play right field in the ninth defensively. No at bat. Bando, 1 for 2, 1 RBI, 2 walks. Thomas, the center fielder, 0 for 2 with an RBI and 2 walks. And Charlie Moore, the catcher, 0 for 4. From Milwaukee, 34 at bat, 6 runs, 8 hits, 6 RBIs, 8 walks, 9 strikeouts. For the Red Sox, Burleson, tough day, 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Brohammer, 1 for 3. Carbo, oh, Carbo walked, scored a run. He came in defensively for Freddie Lynn when Lynn was pinch hit by Remy. Jim Rice, 1 for 4. Yastrzemski, 0 for 2 with a run scored. He walked twice. Fisk, 0 for 3 with an RBI. I think that was a sacrifice fly. He struck out once. Lynn's struggles continue, 0 for 2. Remy came in and pinch hit for him. He had an RBI single off the bench, 1 for 2. Scott, again, Scott struggling mightily, 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Evans, 1 for 4 with a run scored. And Hobson had the, the player of the game. Two for four, two runs scored, three RBIs. He banged two homers. Red Sox had 32 at-bats, five runs, six hits, five RBIs, three walks, three strikeouts. So that's the ball game, folks. And that's the wrap-up. Red Sox lose 6-5 to five to Milwaukee. They fall to 6-4. and four. And Milwaukee goes to 5-6 and six in a very tight American League East early on in 1978. Now, Red Sox fans saying thank you very much for watching. Big shout out to Alan Vanderson in the chat. And also Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. Remember to check out Eric's channel, Higher Ground Gaming. Lots of wonderful retro replay for sports. Right now, a lot of baseball. Very fun channel. I like Eric and I like his channel. And you might get lucky enough to hear Brody, his co-host, his pug dog. So thank you to everyone who joined me today throughout my streams. Thank you to uh, Tabletop Baseball. They joined me in one of my streams for a bit. Appreciate that. Check out their channel. Thank you to Broke Black Man 94 my moderator. He did a wonderful job. He was in earlier on my first stream. Check out Broke Black Man 94s channel. Wonderful TV and movie reviews. Absolutely love David the Saint. ID Gesture. Check him out. He was in the chat in one of my uh, videos, streams. He's doing a lot of fun stuff with some... Uh, uh, what's the game? Grim Dawn, Paths of Exile, and Diablo. As well as sports, sports games. That's ID Gesture. And what's blazing in sports? He does a great job with boxing talk. And uh, I'm trying. Uh, Tim Gersh, check out him. He's another one of my moderators. Nice person. So that's it. That's it for the stream. Thank you very much. Hope everyone has a great rest of the Sunday morning and day. Health and happiness. Till next time. Bye bye. Take care and God bless.